Hello, silly people, and welcome to a new day, a shining, bright new day. And today is February the 27th. Only one day left. Can you believe that? Tuesday, February 27th. And today is freestyle. Draw what you like. But we will review. So let's go. We start with shapes, as always. So the brush tool. And what we normally do is we're just working out, All right? We got to get loose. We got to get limber. We have to make our mothers proud. I don't know what that means at all. But we are a drawing, which is what we do. What we do. And shapes are a great way to warm up. Because once again, shapes are the building blocks of everything. Everything? Everything. Now they might be modified, but basic things come from basic shapes. Hence why we do this. Why we do this. Triangles. Triangles. That was 2D shapes. Now, let's go to 3D shapes. New layer, and once again, you know what to do. We've done this many a time before, many a time before. So I hope you're ready for another brilliant day of drawing. can't believe we did this for about 28 days. It still doesn't, it still doesn't seem quite true to me. But we will discuss all of this. What I have learned from this whole Thing at the end on post-mortem day. That was way off. Right. Hey. hey, we're just getting it going. Hopefully your stroke feels more confident. More confident. We're no longer deaf. We're no longer timid souls, right? We are confident artists. All right, there would be a highlight here. Shadow. This is all simulated 3D. Simulated 3D. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, save it. Always remember to save. Head and hands, we have the skeleton. V, 40%, new layer. Let's get to drawing with the B for the brush tool. We got the cranium. We got the eyebrow ridge comes in, we have the cheeks comes in and are attached to the upper teeth. We have the lower teeth that is attached to the mandible. 
And what is the mandible held to our skull? By strong muscles, strong muscles. We have eye sockets that hold the eye. Two of them, if we're lucky. We have the nasal cavity. We have the orbital bone, the side of the of your eye socket. See, it goes around. We have the cheekbones. That is the skull. Of course, the mouth is where the mouth, the teeth are where the mouth should be. The nose would be at the bottom of the nasal cavity. The eyes would be about here, between the eyes and the bottom of the nose. And behind the, the mandible is your ears. There we go. We have a side plane. Now we go around the cheekbones, down towards the teeth, and pass to, to the chin. So we got the side, top, front, other side. Let's keep going. Da, 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 da. Head three quarters off to my left, screen right. So new layer. Again, we have the cranium. Eyebrow ridge comes in, cheeks goes down to my chin. The mandible, chin edge, bottom of my nose, my eyes. Between these is approximately my ears. The mouth is where my teeth are. I have my eyebrow ridge, my hairline. Side plane, you can see the highlight. down to the chin. Side plane, top, front, side. Again, let's keep going. Last up, hands. Hand in a unique position. We shall drop this back. V, 40 for 40% 40 opacity. New layer. Back to the brush tool. Modified box. If this is the top the box. We have a side plane coming down. Right. Plane, 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 unseen plane, unseen plane. So that's the construction. Let's erase this. All right, we don't need it. It's okay. Brush tool. Let's draw it proper. All proper lies. Back of the hand, palm side. We have the pinky. We have the ring finger. Ring finger. We have the middle finger. Slightly curved. Let's continue with the digits. Have the index. Index. Look at that articulation. Chow, chow, chow. And we have the thumb. And that is the hand. Some indication of plane changes. We have knuckle, knuckles, knuckles. Some bend, some fingernails to show what the orientation of the fingers are. Forearm, forearm. Upper arm. And that is the hand. 
All right. Next up, anatomy mannequin. First, we'll do simple shapes on top of this mannequin. So new layer, B for the brush tool. So we have the circle for the overall cranium shape. You can extend that out to make an oval. She's looking towards the front. We have the eye line, which is usually in the middle between the top and the chin, right? the top of your head and the chin. Middle is about the eye line, eyebrow ridge. Nose is between the eye line and the chin, usually. Nose and the mouth is between the nose and the chin. So that side plane. Side plane. She has a neck. We'll do the egg shape for the rib cage. It's slighter than the box. And ladies are usually slighter than the men. We have a slight side plane here. We have some contraposto going on. Shoulder tilt, hip tilt. Between those, we have the spine. All right. Let's make the box for the hips. Hip box. Slight side plane, right? Because we're looking down upon this box. All right. Our outline would be somewhere around here, looking down. So you see the top of the box. Top of boxes. Top of the boxes to you. We got body angle, which it could also be the sternum. Circles for joints. So we got shoulder joints, elbow joints, wrist joints, knee joints, ankle joints, and cylinders for the arms and the, well, the limbs, all limbs can be cylinders. Cylinders, cylinders, cylinders. She's got feet. And feet. Hands, of course, of course. Hands. And that is the position of this mannequin. So let's go to the muscles, muscle groups. We have the trapezius, upper shoulder. Deltoid, shoulder proper, I guess. Attached with the clavicle. We have the pectoralis, which is clavicle, sternum, wrapping around and up along the rib cage and making into your humerus bone, upper. We have from back to front, of the upper arm, the tricep back, brachialis on the side, bicep on the front. The brachioradialis goes from the lower part of the humerus bone, from the outside coming towards the inside, towards the body side. We have flexors and extenders in your forearm that help move your hand and finger muscles. We have external obliques which are your side, also called the love handles if you got them. That is Miss Dorsey on the upper, back, mostly the back, mostly the back part. We have the rectus abdominis, upper and lower, with the belly button being the dividing section between the two, upper and lower. We have the gracilis of the inner thigh, upper inner thigh, adductor longus, is going towards the center, the middle part of your thigh, the sartorius from the hip, coming across towards the inside of your thigh, coming towards the kneecap, or the knee, outer knee, or I'm sorry, inner knee. So 
hip across the inner thigh towards the inner knee. We have the rectus femoris, rectus femoris, in the center of our thigh, the vastus lateralis on the outside edge of our thigh. Gastronym, gastrocnemius is the calf. Calf muscle would be the calf muscle. The patella is here, your kneecap. The patellar tendon comes from the kneecap towards your ankle. Anterior tibialis, the tib and the fib, tib and fib. The tib, anterior tibialis is right next to the patellar tendon. The fibularis longus, also called the peroneus, peroneus, is on the outside of your lower leg with the extensor digitorum longus between the two. So let's map that to this mannequin, new layer, and we shall trapezius, right? Here's the shoulder, upper shoulder. Here's the clavicle, clavicle. And we have the pectoralis, which clavicle, sternum, across and linking into your upper arm bone clavicle, sternum, across the rib cage, and inserting into your upper humerus. You got the deltoid, deltoid. From front to back, we got the bicep. We have the brachialis, and we have the tricep on the back. So from the back to the front, we have the tricep. We have the brachialis and the bicep. Latissimus dorsi, latissimus dorsi. The external obliques love handles, but she's kind of slim. We have the brachioradialis coming from the outside, upper, well, I'm sorry, lower humerus bone, from the outside towards the inside, outside towards the inside of your forearm. We have extensors and flexors. Extensors and flexors of your forearm, moving your hands and fingers. We have the arctus abdominis, belly button. And that is about the dividing between the upper and lower. We have the gracilis of the inner thigh, the gracilis, adductor longus, adductor longus, going towards the center of your thigh. We have the sartorius coming from the hip, outside hip, towards the inside of your knee, right out to in, outside of the hip, towards the inside of your knee. We have the rectus femoris center of your thigh, the vastus lateralis along the side, your outer thigh. We have the kneecap, kneecap, and the patellar tendon coming from the kneecap towards your ankle. Gastrocnemius is your calf muscle. The gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius. We have the anterior tibialis right next to the patellar tendon. Anterior tibialis. Yeah. Anterior tibialis. Tibialis. <laughs> okay, we have the fibularis longus, also known as the peroneus, on the outside of your lower leg and between the anterior tibialis and the fibularis longus peroneus is the extensor digitorum is the extensor digitorum and those are the muscles right on and so we have done the figure 
Right on, man. Right. So now it's time for the freestyle. All right. So for freestyle, we are going to do Beautiful Beast Kiss, which is an, another OC that I've made, original character, which I implore everyone to make. Make your own characters. Love them. Treat them well. But anyways, here we go. So I want to work on this. I did a, a loose digital sketch of this, but there are things off about it. And I'd like to tighten it up a little bit before. I'm an iterative, iterative person, but iteration is what I want to talk about today. Iteration, iteration, iteration. So one of the best ways to start the iterative process is with gesture. Gesture is a great place to start. So I have Beautiful Bee's Kiss. She is a dimension hopping tiger girl who likes to fight. So because of that, I put her in fighting poses and other poses and everything I could think of and images I saw from the internet and all of that. Right? This is a great place to start. Let's take another one. All right. Fighter. Right. BBK. Beautiful Beast Kiss. And gesture is a great way to try out things. I still like this. I should get this one done. So we'll take this image, for example. All right. This is a loose, light gesture. But then I took this and I Right, here's the original. I blew it up and then I drew on top of it. So here was the original. Blow it up. Draw on top. Draw on top. Sometimes it's easier than making, you know, starting from scratch. It gives you something to work off of. A scaffolding, if you will. So this is the final image, well, the final inked image. All right. So here she is, from small to larger, draw over to the ink. All right, it's iterative. Gesture, loose sketch, ink. All right. That's my usual process. And here is the color of that. And color helps out. It helps people see what the character looks like because we see everything mostly. But it helps to further develop the color character. Let's go for another example. So I have another one. This was the sketch, right? This is the loose gesture. I just did this roughly just to get. And then I built on top of that with this. All right. It's loose, it's light. I'm not committing to anything, I'm just drawing. And then I take this and develop this, All right? I put some muscle definition, I work out some details, All right? You lock it down, you tighten it up. And then, so here is the inked version. So from these to this, All right? Tighten it up, lock it down. And then from this to this, All right? So it's all iterative. I can say that right. It's all iterative, All right? Just to blow it up, rough sketch, tighten it up, tighten that to a a tight pencil or inks, and then you can go to color. That's my usual process. Right? I had always wondered, how did somebody get a final image? Or, well, we see the final, but we don't see the what it takes to get there. So going back to this first one, right? For example, see this tiny little drawing? It's tiny, tiny. This thing is this. Right? 
tiny little gesture is this. So we'll be working on this today. There are some inaccuracies about this drawing right here. So for example, when you're just roughly drawing, right, things can get wonky. The tail, I think, is too long. I like this. And I like the, you know, this. But this right here doesn't make sense. All right, this leg is coming forward, but it's shorter than this leg, which is going back slightly. And this stuff will happen, right? As you're drawing, you're just trying to get the idea down. This stuff will happen. But when you go on to other steps, you improve it, you're iterative. It can be rough, loose, and kind of jank. And then we tighten it up on another, another round. And then we tighten it up again on another round. So for this, I will duplicate it, layer, duplicate layer. Always keep your original just in case you mess up. And I am known for messing up. So let's say lasso tool. I might have to rasterize. So we shall rasterize this layer. Rasterize. And that means I can just manipulate it now. So let's tweak this. Transform. So Command-T for the transform. We're going to, right, it would look something like this. But we're still working on it. And it would be just a little bit bigger. Because this foot is coming out at, out at you. Doesn't have to be perfect, just get it close. Command D for the deselect. I'll move her calf muscle. Deselect. Her calf muscle. A bit up. Command T, transform. Scale it slightly. But we're just iterating. And what do I think about the lower? I think it can move up a little bit. So we shall do so. I'll move that slightly. Command D to deselect. Kinda maybe sorta, kinda maybe sorta. Maybe sorta. Kinda, maybe sorta. That's what I'm all about. The kinda, maybe sorta. Command D, deselect. And I think this hand would also be larger because it's also coming forward, coming towards the camera. But we'll all work it out. I want to adjust. 
We have some basic adjustments, but let's get to drawing, shall we? Okay. So we don't quite need that. Okay. So how about we do what we do normally? We do shapes and we'll try to do with some muscle. So we'll take this V 50%. 40%, let's do 40. Okay, new layer, and we'll draw on top the B for the brush tool. And we've got the cranium. You can do better than that, come on, Trey. Okay. Eyebrow ridge comes in. Out goes to the chin. We can see a bit of the underside. But because she, she's a cat girl, her cat, her ears are on top of her head, right? Because they would normally be behind the mandible. But that is not how this is. And the anatomy of a, a cat girl, I don't quite know. But it was just a fun image. We have a side plane. Coming around the upper bone, on the cheekbone, coming towards the chin. Her eye line, her brow, her hairline. Between her eye line and her chin is about her nose line. She has a smile, but her mouth is between the nose line and the chin. She's got this smile because she loves adventure. Something like that. I have a bit of that egg shape you can see. So let's do that for the rib cage. Her orientation of her head is like this. Her body. So, her hips. You can see the box. And we draw through it. Draw through it. Side plane, side plane, top, bottom, can't be seen. So this is, right, this is the top. Her clavicle, it's going this way. Sternum, Pectoralis, go around the rib cage and up and into. So again, clavicle, round, down the sternum, around and up the rib cage, and inserting into upper humerus. What am I doing? What am I doing? This is the, the box layer. I'm getting ahead of myself again. 
Okay. <laughs> so we have the knee, knee. We have shoulder, shoulder. We have elbow, elbow. We have, let's do the wrist, wrist, wrist. Ankle, ankle. And then we connect them. I connect them. Connect. Connect them. She has a spine, of course. is bending but she still has one and the thigh I think this is too close and you notice that some artists they make bands around the the two forms so if that helps you do that. But you can draw whatever, however you wish. And her other leg is behind this leg. And it goes. So there's a part we can't quite see that's behind this leg. And let's move that a little bit back like that. And I make things up as I go. It's just now how do we do feet? If we remember, there is this middle part. I'm not exactly sure what to call it though. But there's a heel. There is the art. And then there's the foot pad and toes. And Beautiful Bee's Kiss never wears shoes. So again, we have this middle part. We have the heel. We have the arch. Arch. Going into the foot pad. And the toe. Something like that. Oh, I think this is too big. Okay, so we have the hand going back in space. And I tend to exaggerate. It wouldn't be this small compared to this hand, but to emphasize dramatize, dramatize, <laughs> you can do such things because again, art. For this hand, we can make this simple box. The box form see the thumb coming off and we have these fingers radiating off of said box Okay. 
has a neck. And the back follows, see the swoop of the spine. His neck, spine, go together like peanut butter and jelly. And she has wings on her back. And I believe what wings are built like arms, right? So the shoulder would be, right? So it's like she has four pairs of arms. So from the back there would be come down to say the elbow, come up. And then at the wrist, right? The fingers make the feathers. Well done. Something like that. <laughs> something, something like that. So again, it would come down, probably about this way, come up, and then where the hand, the wrist hand is, right, the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, right, the ring, and then pinky behind her. What else did I want to do? The tail. The tail would come off of the upper part of her, right, the spine. So it would be something like this. Like it receding in space. And that is just the basic box form or a simple shape. Form. All right, let's take that. Drop it back to say 30. Now we'll drop you back to 20%. You will be 40%. Now let me make it 30. 20. 30. And do a layer. And let's do some light muscles. So let's see. Trapezius. Trapezius. The deltoid. Deltoid. The deltoid. We have that tricep. Brachialis on the side and the bicep. We have the brachial radialis from the outer towards the inner. Flexors, extenders. Again, from the front to the back, we have the bicep, the 
Brachialis, the tricep. The brachial radialis outside, there's the inside, flexors and extendor, extensors, pectoralis, that was already started. Clavicle, sternum, wrapping along the rib cage and into humerus. Again, clavicle, sternum, along the rib cage, inserting into the upper arm. The latissimus dorsi. On the sides here. Going to her external obliques. External obliques. But she's at a she's bending. Right, so her abdominus. Oh come on. I can't forget this, right? <laughs> try, try, try. Erectus abdominis. What are you doing? Oh boy. Erectus abdominis. I just save there by pressing Command S to save. Always do that when you're working. Right, so she's all scrunchy in the middle. Alright, so. Her this abdominis stretches with her. We can't quite see the gracilis, but there's the hamstring, the hammies of the back of the leg, the gluteus maximus. Erectus femoris. Right, the satoris would come here and swoop on the inside. But again, can't quite see it. We have the patella. Again, from this leg, that far left leg. The rectus femoris. Kneecap and the patella tendon going down towards the ankle. Gastrocnemius. That's too much. Hammy. Hamstring. <laughs> I abbreviated on you, sorry. Hamstring. Gastrocnemius. Going down. Gastrocnemius. We have the, what is this, anterior tibialis? Something like that. And the Fibularis longus. Let us double check. Fibularis. Yes. Yes. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm getting it. I'm sorry. So, fibularis longus. It's on the outside. Extensor digital longus, right? Is between the two. Going towards the ankle. Have the ankle and your foot. Let's do this back foot first. We 
have right the ankle. And there's this middle part that goes into the arch. Arch of the foot. This is just a shorthand I, I'm doing for myself. And then the foot pad and the toes. Foot pad and toesies. And her heel. And so again, heel. We have this middle part. foot pad and the toes. Toesies, toesies, toesies. The tail, of course, of course. Not good with that length. I think so. slightly smaller and coming and getting larger or thicker as it comes to the body. And there's a box. Right. Got a side plane. Can't quite see the top. But the thumb comes off. I usually just keep it simple in the, in the beginning. Keep it simple. Again, the box. The box. And the fingers radiating off of said box. Thumb. We have the pinky. We have the index. Middle finger. ring finger and pinky did I do the vastus lateralis it's on the side and there we go I'm looking at over looking at over looking and if the when you're making limbs, doing what I call the rubber banding sometimes helps to give it, to make it look like it is an object in space. Sometimes that helps.
Now I'm just going to tinker with it for a little bit. So don't, if you have your drawing, good job. But I'm just going to mess around. It's playtime. So let's make another layer of this one, layer, duplicate. And I will make this multiply so I can see more clearly, but I still have the, what I have just drawn underneath. So, Maybe I should name these. I should probably name these. Now I'm just gonna probably just gonna draw on her on top. Just because I want to. <laughs> uh, I don't know, just because I want to. I think that was good. What are you doing, Trey? What are you doing? So as I said, uh, Beautiful Beast Kiss is a dimension hopper. Right? And I originally created her because I wanted to mess with styles. Well, actually, it's a, it's a long story, but her original story story was that she jumped from dimension to dimension. And it kind of started as a way to practice other styles. Like I like other artists work and say she would jump to a, a Hellboy world and I would try to draw her in Hellboy, Mike Magnola style. So all the artists that I, whose work I enjoy, I would take a shot at her being in there and their world. But of course, as an artist, stories can't be contained and they just spill off into other and I think she's one of my favorite characters. Because she's so fun. She's one of those nothing can phase, nothing really phases her types. And who just does things for the pure joy of doing them. And at first, I wanted her to have a, <laughs> her original conception was like a, uh, she was almost like a Deadpool type where she hops from different dimensions and she had an annoying laugh, like a, a nya ha 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 ha, nya ha 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 laugh that she would always do. I think her personality has settled down as I've gotten to gotten to draw her more and make stories but in the beginning she was different 
And I think as an artist, that just happens. Right? At a certain point, a character becomes their own character. And you can kind of think of what they would do before they do it. I don't know, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to, to try to explain. Still not sure how this hair works. Because without ears, it would just let go. And she has unique facial stripes, as in three. I'm just working all over the place. It keeps it. I don't know. It's just, I guess, how I work. 
not sure if any other artists do this. I'm pretty sure most of them. I wouldn't say most, but I'm sure there's at least some that do. has sportswear under her tank top and dress her active wear I like drawing with pencil and paper. I still love the hand skills. Some people are whizzes on computer. I always feel a bit a slightly disjointed, slightly off. Drawing on computer and whatnot. Maybe one day I'll uh, invest in a Cintiq, like a, one of those huge ones that you draw actually on the, on the surface without having to look up. I'm looking up at my screen and I'm drawing down on my, the drawing tablet. I always think that it's always best to learn with the least, right? Don't invest heavily in anything until you get some reps in on your cheap stuff, right? Don't buy anything expensive until you know. It's like, oh, I like this. Okay, I'll buy all the best and something better or allegedly better. You know, sometimes the fancy stuff is just fancy. And the cheap stuff is cool. And sometimes it's not, but you know. Life is just like that sometimes. Life is just like that. All right, I'm going to go for a little bit. Let's say another 10 minutes, which will go by fast. <laughs> it always does. So draw through a tray, draw through it. freestyle because you can go anywhere you want anywhere
And she follows the, I guess, somewhat street fighter. Street fighter principle is where the, the hands and feet are slightly bigger because she fights. And bigger hands and feet are like a sign of strength. Not insanely big, but you know. It's like emphasizing muscles on a person who works out a lot. It just emphasizes emphasis. She has an ankle bracelet. Well, she was once a prisoner of her creator. And yes, this is, <laughs> she has a complex history. In another story that I made, uh, a, a woman created her to be a fighter in her war. And all of the fighters at the time were created from splicing animal DNA and human DNA and giving them like extra a boost. So she's a fighting type. There are other, you know, farming type animals. And I know it doesn't make any sense. But this is just the stuff that floats through my mind. So when she broke out, she still has <laughs> you know, her, she can't be contained. And on this hand, she wears a crystal, well, an armlet with a crystal that, like the infinity stones, this one helps her jump dimensions. And on this arm is just a, a sports and sports armband that she can wipe her forehead with for sweat and whatnot. Oh gosh. So if you ever wonder where stories come from, they come from everywhere. No, seriously, they, they come. I'm always amazed at artists and their <laughs> proclivity for Inventiveness. I like that word. I am a pro proclivity for. Sometimes it's just goofy. And we know it's goofy. Like, this is a dumb idea. And sometimes some of the best ideas are dumb ones. Or maybe it's just me. Pausing to look over it. You gotta pause. You gotta pause. Okay. She also has stripes. on her body because she is a tiger girl after all. And they're randomly arranged usually. running out of time. But there's so much to do. A 
how things should go flying. Let's undo that one more time. Better. But still needs work. Better. first once more all right so back back to the schedule here we are on tuesday the 27th of february and we had a good set we reviewed all of our usual shapes heads and hands mannequin and anatomy but we also did some freestyle and that's great so as the sun sets on another day I would like to say thank you for joining me and I will see you once again for the final day on the 28th. So take care. Bye-bye.